Hi, I'm Alice. I'm a sixth form student from here in Folkestone, and like many young people my age, I'm in the process of deciding what I want to do after I leave school, and in particular, whether or not I want to go to university. But in light of the recent tuition fee rise, and the reports of graduates being unable to get jobs after leaving uni, I'm asking the question, is university still worth it? In order to answer this, I spoke to three people about their opinions and experiences on the matter. Firstly, I asked Jamie Stevens, manager of the outreach team at Canterbury Christchurch University, what a student can study at university. There are hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of different degrees. Obviously, you have your traditional school subjects like English and maths and sciences and humanities subjects such as history and geography and law and politics. For those that have an idea of the career that they would like to have in future, there are more sort of vocational courses such as nursing... Uh, policing, education studies, um, and then there's a whole range of other subjects, uh, forensic science, theology, film, radio and television, graphic design, journalism, really anything that you can think of. But obviously, university is not the only option for school leavers. I spoke to Spencer Melman of notgoingtouni.com about what options there are outside of university for young people. There is a a raft of opportunities now. I mean, traditionally, you know, you were fairly limited in your choice. A lot of schools were pushing you towards university or just getting a job. Uh, But certainly apprenticeships has made a a real big uh, resurgence. There's a raft of opportunities in a whole range of different sectors with uh, apprenticeships. Everything from social media to becoming an apprentice jockey engineering, IT, even accountancy. And with an apprenticeship, you're earning while you're learning. So an apprenticeship generally lasts a year. Uh, You're getting a salary, not an enormous salary, but a salary. You're working towards a nationally recognized qualification. And then hopefully at the end of that year, you've got a full-time job with that organization. There's also sponsored degrees. Now, a sponsored degree is a, a degree that's done generally through an employer, so it might be somebody like Morrison's or IBM, well, they'll pay you to do your degree whilst working for them. So you split your time and your study. So there's a range of these different schemes out there to help young people. And we get oh, anywhere from seventy to 100,000 young people a month coming to the website, which shows there really is a demand for these sorts of opportunities. Next, Jamie spoke about some of the benefits of going to university. There are a huge number of benefits to going to university. Students that come out with a degree are more likely to earn more. On average, um, £140,000 more across a lifetime. Obviously, you become an expert in a particular subject area uh, and you can use that to further your career. But like me, you may not uh, use your degree directly uh, in your career, but it does teach you an awful lot of other skills that are really transferable, that employers would look for in applications. However, Spencer disagrees with Jamie and thinks that university doesn't make you any more likely to get a high-paying job than vocational courses. I've run a number of businesses. I've employed graduates and non-graduates, and both sets have had equal opportunity to climb the ladder or be successful and I've seen non-grads be very successful and I've seen grads be very successful. The thing for me is I think most things come down to attitude. If you've got the right attitude you'll generally be successful Um, and if you look at some of the most successful businessmen in the country whether it's Alan Sugar, Peter Jones, James Kahn, none of those guys went to university. I, I've run three successful businesses. I never went to university. So, you know, it, it, it's not a guarantee for a great job. Charlie Vinyl, a student studying business with psychology at Southampton Solent University, managed to get an internship at PepsiCo in his second year and has now been offered a job with them. And I asked him whether he thinks he would have got the same opportunity had he not gone. I definitely would not have got the same opportunity, definitely not. But, I mean... It's quite hard to say because you can work in, in a company and build yourself up without a degree. I think a degree seems maybe a shortcut through a lot of companies, even though you are paying a lot of money. But for me personally, it's definitely worth it. And, and the opportunities I've had, I don't think I would have had without a degree. Of course, one of the big factors that a young person has to consider when thinking about university is the cost, especially now that the fees have been tripled to up to £9,000 a year. I asked Spencer whether he thinks that this rise in tuition has been what has affected the amount of people applying to university each year. 
I won't say that it is um, the only thing that's affected the landscape, but I think the rise, in tu- the rise in tuition fees has stopped parents and students in their tracks, and it's made them stop and think about the process um, a little harder, whether it's really right for a parent to say to their young person that we're happy for you in to, to incur to your 50 grand's worth of debt, because that's what it is. You know, you still have to pay it back. It's still a debt. Okay, you don't pay it back till you earn in excess of 21K, but any graduate is going to be expecting to earn that sort of salary plus. However, Charlie explained why it is a debt that he is happy to have. Although it is a lot of money and it is, it is debt, but it's not debt in a sense because you only have to pay it back if you can afford to pay it back which makes it kind of a, a debt which i would be happy to have as long as i because it, it, it means that i wouldn't be earning get an amount of money without the degree but when i am earning the money that's the only time i have to pay it back and still i mean a lot of degree jobs probably start on 24 like probably even so in whichever sector so mm-hmm. it, it doesn't really matter which sector really I can see the point of if, if the job, you didn't need a degree to get it and then you could just go and then you've still got this debt to pay back even though you didn't need the degree at the end, mm-hmm. at the beginning, which that, that would be, yes, it would be pointless. But, um, I mean, if, if, if the, the, the job is a degree level job, like, doesn't matter what your degree is, I think the, the debt is worth it. Agreeing with Charlie, Jamie spoke in further detail about why student debts are not like other debts. There's a lot of reports in the media about huge student debts that that uh, young people today are sort of burdened with when they come out uh, of university. Personally, I, I don't really see it that way. It's not a debt in the same way that it would be if you took out a loan for a car. There's not going to be people coming knocking on your door asking for money. Yes, the fees are high, but there are tuition fees loans to cover the cost of the fees and maintenance loans to help with living costs. On top of that, there's a whole host of other financial support opportunities while you're studying at university. Every university will have its own bursary. There's a national scholarship programme at the moment. In terms of uh, the repayments and the cost of, of studying at higher education, you don't pay any of the loan back until you start earning a good wage. Um, so until you earn over £21,000, you don't have to pay any amount of the fees back. When you do start earning above 21000 that money comes out of your pay slip in the same way that other tax would do. So really, if you, if you look at it as a, a sort of graduation tax, um, where you only start paying for your higher education once you're feeling the financial benefits of it by, by earning a good wage. Uh, if for any reason your earnings then drop below that £21,000, the repayments will stop until you start earning more. So it really is a, a, a no-win, uh, no-fee education. However, not all graduates are leaving university with graduate-level careers now. Here is what Jamie had to say about those worrying that they won't find a job after university. Well, I would say that it's, uh, it's pretty difficult for everyone out there at the moment to find, uh, find employment, uh, particularly permanent employment, uh, and the same applies for graduate students. But graduate students... Uh, do have that additional skill set and that additional area of of expertise that will uh, help them to find that better job. Uh, Yes, it's true that um, you may come out of university and find yourself not in your dream graduate position, but doing a a job just to make uh, ends meet initially. Um, I would say, you know, be patient, work at it. Um, While you're at university, talk to your um, careers advisors there Every university has one and they can give you some uh, advice on graduate opportunities that are out there and how to write the best CV that you can. Spencer offered a possible reason for why graduates are finding it harder to find careers, telling us about the shrinking of graduate programmes and how they are making the playing field more level for those who do not have a degree. I think that some organisations are still a little bit too graduate focused. But what I must say is over the last couple of years, I've seen a real shift in attitude with more and more big organisations, big, well-respected employers starting to shrink their graduate programmes and grow their school leaver and apprenticeship schemes. And that includes the big management consultancies like PwC and Ernst & Young. 
And those guys don't make those decisions lightly. So I'd, I'd like to think that the playing field is starting to get a little more level. In light of this, I asked Jamie whether he thinks that university is therefore still right for everyone if some people may find it quicker to get a job through another avenue. We believe in the benefits of higher education, but having said that, university is not necessarily for everybody. There are lots of other alternative routes uh, to improve uh, yourself and your skill sets, but um, it's really the, the most sort of straightforward way of giving yourself the best opportunity in your future career. Although this may be true for some, Spencer made the point that this may only be the case if you are going to university for the right reasons. I think if you're going for the wrong reasons, um, you know, whether it's just following your friends into university or you're doing a course that doesn't necessarily further you in the workplace. And I think, you know, there's lots of courses out there that have been talked about over the last few years that don't necessarily guarantee you a good job. And I think while such a big charge is associated with uni, that's a big old price to pay um, for, for going off and doing a degree that doesn't necessarily help you at work. So I, I think it, it's about making the right choice. Look, if you're going to be a doctor, if you're going to be a scientist, a number of other things that require university, that's fantastic because we need educated people going down that route. But there are some alternatives. You can actually become an accountant, believe it or not, uh, through the apprenticeship scheme. It can be quicker and cheaper to become an accountant going through uh, the AAT or SEMA or some of the awarding bodies in accountancy. And in fact, you can even become a lawyer now through vocational learning rather than going to university through the Chartered Institute of Legal Executives. So there are alternatives, and I would really just urge young people to stop, look, do their homework, have a good look through not going to uni, uh, and get a sense of what's out there before you rush headlong into university. Charlie agrees that, in his experience, people do not benefit from going to university for the wrong reasons. There's no point in going to uni yet. I don't know, a lot of people do. I mean, a lot of people in my uni are here purely because they didn't know what else to do or it was like a... They didn't want to go into the real world, in a sense. So, I mean, people who don't really know what to do and they go to uni, they're the people who like, who don't have a clue what they want to do and just use it as kind of like a, a buffer before they start in the real world. That's maybe they shouldn't be going to university and think about the debt because they could be doing something that they don't need a degree and probably be a lot better off. While schools offer basic advice on what subjects you should be taking in terms of careers and university, I decided to ask the experts for their advice on choosing options after sixth form. First, Jamie gave me his advice on how to decide what university is right for you and what course you should take there. Staff working at university uh, are not just about sort of getting um, people through the door. Uh, they want the right people to be on the right course. So uh, if anyone is uh, undecided about which course to take at university but um, have an idea of the career they'd like to do, then contact uh, various universities. Every university has its own admissions office. They'll be able to um, give you some advice about where the degrees can possibly lead to. Also online, there's a whole host of um, information out there on on websites such as the UCAS website which um, which you may have heard of um, they have a whole list of different degrees and you know how how to kind of narrow it down if you're unsure of what degree that you'd like to take but you still like to go to university think about the kind of person that you are if you're interested in helping people for example if you're interested in working independently or being creative answering those sorts of questions will help you to narrow down your your course options and if someone thinks that they would like to go to university but is unsure how to decide which one, then I would strongly encourage that person to attend as many university open days as they possibly can. Some universities are in amongst a, a city. Some are uh, sort of self-contained on, on the edge of towns uh, with a real campus feel. So have a think about the kind of place that you're going to be happy Think about whether you'd like to be as far away from your family as possible to have that experience of living independently or think about whether you'd like to consider your local university to uh, still enjoy the benefits of living at home and, and maybe staying close to family and friends. So there's a whole range out there and I'm sure there's uh, the right university out there for you. Uh, so all the information is out there, um, but it's up to you to sort of... to go out and, and do your research and really get as much information as you can to make an informed decision. And if you're still not sure, contact the universities directly 
and they'll be able to give you uh, any information that you need. Next, Spencer gave some advice on looking for careers advice and some tips on how to decide on which after-school option is right for you. We get we get a lot of people coming to not going to uni, sitting on the fence, trying to decide. I think that when we go out there and meet a lot of young people face-to-face, there, there's real uncertainty of what's the right way to go. And careers advice at the moment is reasonably poor and, you know, up and down the country, there's not as many careers advisors as there was. So young people do have a dilemma of where to go for their advice. You know, many of their parents either went down the university route or are out of touch with what's currently out there. So they need to take the time and trouble to do their research. And for those sitting on the fence, you know, my advice would be to look really hard at where you want to be. What's the career path that you want to take? Is university the only option? Is there an alternative? And then sit down and weigh up those alternatives. Speak to somebody that's done a degree in that particular sector or speak to somebody that's done an apprenticeship in that particular sector and get a sense of what they've experienced and what where that's going to take them. And, you know, some will decide that uni is the right route for them for a number of different reasons. And some will say, you know what, I would rather be earning money from day one whilst I'm learning and not incurring debt. And some will prefer the uni experience as, as well as going off and studying. So it is horses for courses, but, you know, my advice is not to rush that decision and to really do your homework. Finally, I asked Charlie whether, judging by his experience, he would recommend university. Depends on the individual, but overall, yes, I would say. For, for most people who are competent enough to go to university, I would, I would say yes. 